Hello everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So, have you ever thought that why red blood cells or any cells under anaerobic condition while they conduct glycolysis, why they make lactate as the end product? What is the reason for red blood cells and cells under anaerobic uh, situation? Why they make lactate as the end product of glycolysis? Why they can't just stop at pyruvate as the end product of glycolysis? So today in this particular video, I am going to explain you the exact reason why red blood cells or the tissues under anaerobic condition which will prefer to make a lactate as the end product of glycolysis, not pyruvate as the end product of glycolysis. So here I have written the reactions that are involved in glycolysis. So just to briefly go over those reactions. So we have glucose here. So the glucose molecule is converted to glucose 6-phosphate and this job is done by glucokinase or hexokinase and this particular reaction it's going to consume a molecule of ATP so ATP consumption will occur in this particular reaction so I'll just write it as minus ATP there so it is ATP consumed there okay so now glucose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 6-phosphate and then fructose 6-phosphate later it is going to be converted into fructose 1,6-biphosphate or bisphosphate. This job is done by an enzyme called PFK1 and uh, during this reaction so there is one more ATP that is consumed. Another ATP is consumed here. Now the fructose 6-phosphate so it will be converted into glycerol dehyde 3-phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Now the dihydroxyacetone phosphate can be converted into a glycerol dehyde 3-phosphate so effectively we will have two molecules of glycerol dehyde 3-phosphate coming from one molecule of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Now the glycerol dehyde 3-phosphate it will be converted into two molecules of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. This job will be done by glycerol dehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. During this reaction inorganic phosphate will be incorporated by glycerol dehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. As you can notice from the name of the enzyme dehydrogenase, it means this is an oxidation reduction. Glycerol dehyde 3-phosphate is oxidized into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Now, since glycerol dehyde 3-phosphate is oxidized here, so there must be an acceptor of electron that is coming from glycerol dehyde 3-phosphate. So the acceptor of that electron is NAD, so NAD plus. NAD plus is going to accept electron and it will be reduced into NADH, NADH plus H plus. So in this particular reaction, glycerol dehyde 3-phosphate is oxidized into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate and NAD plus acts as an acceptor of electrons coming from glycerol dehyde 3-phosphate and getting reduced into NADH plus H plus. So this job is done by glycerol dehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. Now once you get two molecules of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, so you make two molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate. During this reaction, there will be release of two ATP molecules. So two ATPs are released. So I'll just write it as plus two ATPs. So you get two ATPs there in the reaction. Initially you have spent two ATPs and now you got back two ATPs. So net gain right now it is zero. Now three phosphoglycerate two molecules will be converted to two molecules of two phosphoglycerate and they will be converted into two molecules of 2-phosphoenolpyruvate, 2 molecules. 
Now two molecules of 2 phosphoenyl pyruvate, they will be converted to two molecules of pyruvate by pyruvate kinase enzyme. During this reaction, you are going to get two more ATPs here. So initially you have spent two ATPs, later you got back two ATPs at 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate, 2,3 phosphoglycerate step and that's done by phosphoglycerate kinase enzyme and then another step phosphoenol pyruvate into pyruvate so by pyruvate kinase you got two more ATPs so total you got four ATPs but you spent two ATPs in converting one glucose into two pyruvate so the net gain so far is two ATPs now this is what happens in glycolysis so the end product of glycolysis is pyruvate and you have made two net ATPs and also you have generated means the cell has generated 2 NADH plus 2 H plus 2 NAD, 2 NAD plus gets in, getting in and it will be get, giving you 2 NADH plus 2 H plus. Now it all depends on whether oxygen is present in the cell or if the cell has got mitochondria or there is no mitochondria and no oxygen. So depending on that, so pyruvate fate will be determined. If the, pyruvate, if the cell has got mitochondria and if sufficient oxygen is present, two pyruvates will be converted into two acetyl-CoA molecules and these two acetyl-CoA molecules will get into TCA cycle and in the TCA cycle that will be convert they will be oxidized into carbon dioxide and water and NADH plus H plus FADH2 they get into electron transport chain and give ATPs it means under aerobic condition and in tissue cells which have got mitochondria pyruvate is completely oxidized into acetyl CoA and then into carbon dioxide it means under aerobic condition and in the presence of mitochondria, glucose is completely oxidized into carbon dioxide, six carbon dioxide molecules and giving energy. What happens, what happens in red blood cells which do not have mitochondria? So the red blood cells don't have mitochondria or cells which have lack of oxygen, say uh, sternously exercising skeletal muscle or the cells which are deficient in oxygen, say maybe the retina. So the cells which are deficient in oxygen or the cell which, uh, which are lacking mitochondria, so the fate of pyruvate is it has to be converted into lactate. Pyruvate has to be converted into lactate in these cells, especially the red blood cells. What is the reason for this? The reason is if you don't convert pyruvate into lactate so glucose is continuously converted into two pyruvate molecules and rbc will be getting two atps two net atps but you cannot keep on doing that cell cannot keep on converting glucose into two pyruvate and pyruvate is if it is not oxid if it is not reducing this pyruvate into lactate what happens so pyruvate builds up but the problem is not with the pyruvate. So problem is if you continuously con uh, run this glycolysis conversion of glucose into 2 pyruvate. So that will lead to shortage of NAD plus molecules. See the NAD plus they are needed by glycerol D8 3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. So there is, there must be a continuous supply of NAD plus to conduct or to continue glycolysis. So if your glycolysis ends at pyruvate and if the pyruvate is not oxidized, especially the NADH plus H plus that is produced in glycerol D83-phosphate dehydrogenase, if it is not oxidized and if you are now, if the cell is not regenerating NAD plus, that will lead to overall decrease in glycolysis because there will be shortage of NAD plus. In order to avoid that, in order to avoid shortage of NAD plus in the cell and, and also to provide NAD plus so that it acts as an acceptor of electrons coming from glycerol D3 phosphate conducted by glycerol D3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. So there must be a way to use NADH plus H plus 
and regenerate NAD+. This is exactly the reason why pyruvate is reduced into lactate formation during this time. NADH plus H plus is oxidized giving its electrons to pyruvate thereby pyruvate is converted to 2 lactate, 2 pyruvates will be converted to 2 lactate and meanwhile NADH plus H plus is oxidized back into NAD plus and this NAD plus will participate in glycerol D8,3-phosphate dehydrogenase reaction. So thereby there is a continuous supply of NAD plus and with this glucose can be continuously oxidized into pyruvate and then continuously converted into 2 lactate and effectively RBC can make 2 net ATPs. This is why red blood cells which do not have mitochondria or any tissues which lacks oxygen so they will oxidize basically they will reduce pyruvate into lactate the reason for this is to oxidize NADH plus H plus coming from glycerol D83 phosphate dehydrogenase step and regenerate NAD plus for that particular enzyme to continue glycolysis. So the lactate that is formed here coming from pyruvate to lactate is done by enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. Now let me explain what happens to lactate that is produced in red blood cell. So the lactate that is produced in the red blood cell will be continuously pumped out of red blood cells into the blood and from the blood it will be taken up by liver and liver is going to handle that lactate. In the liver lactate will be converted back into pyruvate and pyruvate gets into mitochondria and be oxidized or under fasting, uh, fasting condition pyruvate can be converted to glucose. Now how does this red blood cells will secrete out lactate? What is the transporter of lactate out of red blood cell? So the lactate transporter in red blood cell membrane is MCT1 that is monocarboxylate transporter 1. There are variety of monocarboxylate transporter. So monocarboxylate transporter 1 is the transporter which is specifically transporting lactate out of red blood cell into the blood and from there in the from the blood liver is going to take up that lactate and convert that back into pyruvate and the fate of pyruvate it depends on what is the need of liver and what is the condition in the hepatocyte during that time. So this is all about why red blood cells and tissues which which lack oxygen why they can convert, why their end product of glycolysis is lactate. The main reason for this is you got to regenerate NAD plus every time that you produce NADH plus H plus in glycolysis under anaerobic situation because you don't have mitochondria working under anaerobic situation and also if the cell do not have mitochondria there is no way that cell can convert NADH plus H plus into NAD plus. That is why they need to find an alternate way to oxidize NADH plus H plus and that alternate way under anaerobic situation is to take pyruvate into lactate formation by lactate dehydrogenase thereby NADH plus H plus is oxidized into NAD plus. I hope this video has helped you in quickly revising glycolysis overall and also to understand why anaerobic tissues and red blood cells, well, the end product of glycolysis in them is lactate, not a pyruvate oxidizing into carbon dioxide. Thanks for watching and see you again in my next video. Take care.